Let's go, let's go, let's go. Mm-hmm. Welcome, everybody. We're calling this Car Shopping Secrets, and we're going to call this the warm-up because we have a great show prepared for you guys where we're going to be actually uh, doing two experiences. One is going to be this live experience. So those of you guys who are actually available for um, the live experience will be broadcasting live uh, four days a week, 12 Eastern time and three. So we want to make sure we're catering to people on the West Coast, East Coast, uh, Central time, Mountain time, give you guys time to come on live, get your questions answered live. But then at the same time, um, we're going to broadcast uh, the show at 5.30 and at 8.30. So for those of you who are not able to join us live, you will be able to uh, catch the show once we actually broadcast it. So uh, if you've uh, if you've been uh, with us for the last couple of days while we've been testing about a week and a half, it's been great. Shout out to the people who've been with us during this first couple of days of test and uh, the response has been great. We've had probably three to four to sometimes 500 people join us live on all four platforms. And uh, what we're gonna be doing today is what we've been doing, rapid fire Q&A, making sure that you have all your questions answered and um, so feel free to start shooting them off. I did want to give y'all, and first of all, let me not act like anyone knows me. Um, you may not know me. My name is Deshaun. I'm publicly known as Deshaun, the auto advisor. I spent 14 years in the car business. And now what I do is teach people like you how to save the most money, all the money that you should be saving whenever you want to buy or lease a car. And also, I show you where the hidden money is, because there's a lot of money hidden in your car deals that you have not seen. And so that's what we do. So let's get it. Let's get it going. Um, shoot the first question. And I got my man Dolan moderating. So we'll be pulling questions from every platform, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok and Facebook. So kick it. And oh, shout out to the sharers. Could everybody who shares do what you do, help us spread this message, hit that share button or tag one person. They'll definitely thank you. All right, Dolan, shoot the first question up. This is from Instagram, is a down payment necessary? Not at all. Now down payment, not necessary. If you can find a car for the budget you want without a down payment, do it. Now let's not confuse that with down payments being illegal because that's just not true. Some of you may have found out the hard way, or some of you may have just Googled, because who saw that video that went viral talking about down payments are illegal? It was one of the worst videos to ever go viral. Talking about truth and lending, totally wrong. If you just Google, type that law into Google, you would have seen that law had nothing to do with down payments. So I don't want you going into a dealership looking foolish and then marching out thinking, well, they're lying to me. So no, down payments aren't necessary. When you shop for cars, the way I'm going to teach you and the way you should be shopping is no down payment. Because the good thing about shopping for your offers with no down payment is you can actually see what the car costs. You can actually see what the car costs when you're not putting money into the deal. Sometimes they confuse you or you can get confused thinking you're getting a deal because you're putting money into the deal and you're not really seeing it. You're like, oh, my payment's only $400 a month and you're not seeing the overall. So whenever we shop our leases, we always shop our lease offers with no down payment. And whenever we shop, whenever we're not leasing, if we're purchasing, we are always doing our own budgeting between the bank, not between the dealer. The dealer's job is to win the bid and sell us this car because they beat all their competition. Our job is to do our budgeting on our own, separate from the dealer. All right, go ahead, Dolan, shoot them up. Oh, for everybody who just jumped on, if you don't know, my new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, is officially available. It is available at 75% off for our launch. It's normally $97, but you can get a copy of it. Everything I teach is in that book. Everything you see in my videos on social media, is in that book. But the thing about it is it's all in one place and it's step by step. 
So you don't have to worry about guesswork. All the guesswork is taken out. So if you want your copy, it's 75% off for the next 30 minutes while you're on this broadcast. Click the, click the link in my TikTok bio or click the link in my Instagram bio, or you can go to uh, Deshaun'sBook.com or scan the QR code. Go ahead, Dolan, shoot the next question up. Everybody type your questions. We'll get to everybody. Well, we're, we'll get to as many as possible. I don't want to say we get to everybody. And someone else is going to ask you a question. I guarantee it if you just stay on long enough. Can I return my lease early? You can't. Uh, this is from TikTok. You can't without paying a penalty. You can't because you've contracted for 36 months, 39 months. Hopefully you've never did a four-year lease, but you've contracted and you have payments due. So if you go drop off that lease, you're going to have a payment. You're going to get billed for all of those payments. The only thing you can do is you could do what I call an equity assessment. We talk about this in my book. My book is seven steps. And some of you have seen this video. I posted tons of video about tons of videos about the uh, equity assessment. What it is, is you're finding out how much you owe and then you're finding out how much the, the how, what your best offer is on that car. And that's not an offer from a dealership. That's an offer from people who pay cash for cars and typically pay more than you'd get if you trade it. These are CarMax, Carvana, Driveway, um, AutoNation, uh, CarGuru sell my car, and um, you could you could throw you could throw um, uh, there's one more you could throw we 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 like to get at least six offers. Uh, Kelly's Blue Book instant cash offer. So anybody who's thinking I want to try to get out of my car early, the only way you can get out without losing a ton of money is you must know your equity position. If you can break even, you can get out of that vehicle anytime you want. If you can make a profit, even better. All right, go ahead, Dolan. Uh, this is from Instagram. Hi, I don't have a trade-in and I'm a cash buyer. I want to buy, not lease. What's the best strategy to get a good deal? Okay, so you're going to skip from step one, step two. All right, so let's determine what you, what you, what you, what your budget is. Your budget's going to, a lot of, who's ever wondered, should I purchase new or use? If you've ever wondered, should I purchase new or use, type me in the comments. I'm going to tell you the biggest indicator for somebody like this, who, who's, who, this question's from Instagram. Biggest indicator is budget. Now, there's two types of people. If you could afford a new car that has everything you need in it, and you can, and you can get it new, then we'll go that route. And what your best way to get a, a great deal on a new car is to get multiple offers. You must get five because 80% of dealers are overpriced. The only way you're going to see that is when you're at home or when you, I, I would, I'm not going to recommend you be there because you're going to say, Deshaun, how can I get five offers? You can't if you're in dealerships. If you're just driving from dealer to dealer, that's ineffective. You could either do it, I'm gonna give you a manual way to do it, and then my way is the totally at home using using the internet. Um, manually, you'd go and you'd go into one dealer, you'd get an offer, you'd come home, and then you reach out to you reach out to as many dealerships as necessary to get five offers. And I would go direct to the sales manager. I would call the dealership, act for a sales manager, and try to cut through the through the garbage. I wouldn't be talking to salespeople. In fact, what you're going to find is if you use what I'm teaching, you'll probably never talk to a salesperson about numbers. Uh, uh, definitely not verbally. Now, my way, what I do is I have something in my book called the 25 to 5 strategy. And what we do is we connect with 25 dealers online. We, we typically see that out of 25 dealers, we do this in 20 minutes because we're copying and pasting. Very simple. Once you let 25 dealers know what you're looking for, about 10 to 12 will probably have a car. And then out of that 10 to 12, you can probably get five to seven offers. And one of those offers is going to blow all the other offers away. And that's how you buy your vehicle 100% from home or either 90% if you're going to go pick it up. Now, if your budget doesn't, some people say, Deshaun, well, what if I don't want a new car? If you can afford both, it's really a matter of, do you want to treat yourself or do you want to go major value? Major value might be, all right, I'll go pre-owned. Now, if you can't afford new because you're paying cash, you might can't get everything you want. 
in a new in a new car paying cash you got to go pre-owned it and in which case you're going to the marketplaces and you're going to find your car there we have three things we use to narrow down anybody who's shopping for a used car type you in the comments three things you want to remember in the narrowing down process first thing is title history second thing is service records third thing is accident history that's how you narrow down from a bunch of cars to your top three to five. And once you get that top three to five, you need to get the window sticker. I teach a secret strategy that only people who learn from me know where we, if we can't get the car facts on the marketplace, we go to the dealer's website to get the car back because we want to see what that vehicle, we want to get that car facts. We can't use auto check because unfortunately auto check doesn't show the service records. So that's the three step narrowing down process. Once we narrow it down to our top choices, then we're going to get the window sticker to see what the original price was. And then we make so then we make sure there's no bogus fees. So it all in all, it's a five step process to, to narrowing down and getting our best used car in the market. Because the name of the game, who knows when it comes to market value, what are we concerned about? Who knows if you've been on the broadcast, when it comes to market value, what is always our goal? Whether we're buying, leasing, whether we're buying new, buying used, what is our goal? When it comes to market value see if anybody knows let's see i give people some time i'll give you five seconds and then i'm gonna tell everybody let me see okay below market value so i never want you got it kim very close under market value that's it so i don't ever want you to think about or have these conversations with people when we're talking about market value that's not interesting to us what's interesting to us is making sure we're buying below market okay that's the only thing okay go ahead dolan shoot the next question for everybody who just jumped on could you please tag one person if you're in the sharing if you're in the financial literacy appreciate you they will thank you and they'll also be mad at you if they find out that you've been listening to me using this stuff saving all this money and you didn't tell them you don't want that. So tag one person. All right. Uh, this is from TikTok. What do you think about buying from Tesla? Um, Tesla takes the negotiation out of it for the price of the car. Um, you know, if if you do your, we, we, you, you always, before you think about buying any car, y'all realize there's some bad cars out there. You need to make sure that you are actually, you're doing your initial quality check. We go to Google, we type in the year to make the model, initial quality. We scan that first page. Initial quality is the first 90 days of the vehicle's life. If there's any problems, if owners are complaining, if the data is showing that it's a bad car, there's electrical problems, you'll typically see it there. Then we want to check reliability. That's the first three years. So anybody who's buying or leasing a new car, you need to be checking initial quality and reliability. Initial quality is the first 90 days. Reliability is the first three years. Now, if you're going to buy a Tesla for the long term, you're going to type in longevity, type in year, make, model, longevity. And, you know, you need to make sure that's it. Once you find out it's a good car, then it's a matter. Of, there's no negotiation with Tesla, but you still need to make sure you're getting bids for your loan. Very important. We want multiple people. Some of you were on with us on the last show. We talked about the bank bidding war. You need to have multiple banks and credit unions bidding for your interest rate. We don't choose one. Everyone who we do business with must win the bid. Now, and, and that's how we guarantee we get below market everything. I don't just want a below market purchase. I want below market interest. If everyone's paying 5%, I want the lowest interest rate available. And the only way I'm going to get that is to have multiple banks and credit unions bid for my, for my business. All right, go ahead, Dolan, shoot it through. And if y'all want to go any deeper, deeper on that, you just let me know. We can go deep on the bank bidding war. You must, you, you must do that correctly. And when you see how much money you save, how much money you've been given to these banks and interest or your credit union, and you start to see one point on an interest rate literally could be a thousand dollars, depending on the price of the car. If it's a fifty thousand dollar car, one point can be more. So if you're not taking shopping your interest rate as serious as you're taking shopping for your car loan. I mean, as serious as you're taking shopping for your car, you're missing it. You're missing money. OK, but we're not going to do that anymore. What's the maximum yearly mile? This is from Instagram. We're taking questions from all four platforms. We're live on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube and Facebook. So Dolan's pulling all the questions. 
what's the maximum yearly mileage where leasing is appropriate? Um, I'd say I'd say thirty thousand. I'd say thirty thousand. Uh, but, you know, I teach two strategies for short term high mileage driver. If you drive more than 18,000 miles a year, I want you to type HM. HM. See, we're talking to tons of different people. Everything we teach is custom. Everything I'm going to teach you is going to be for you. It's no point in learning from somebody who's trying to teach a regular driver and you a high mileage driver. Most of what they're learning is not going to work for you, and you're going to be frustrated when you try it and it doesn't work. So let's talk specifically for a second. Somebody asked all the high mileage drivers, you need to first determine, my, my book goes over seven steps. My whole process is seven steps. Step one is to ask yourself, how many years am I going to keep the car? That's going to show you whether you should purchase or lease, because if you're not keeping the car long enough to outlive and let the depreciation cool off, you're losing thousands of dollars in depreciation. Now, step seven is delivery. So by the time you get to step seven, you're picking up your car. If you don't put your deal on the right foundation by determining if you're a short-term person, you ain't keeping that car eight years, you're a short-term person. Eight, 10, 15 years, you're a long-term keeper for that car. You might have one long-term car and one short-term car in the same household. So it's not about the person, it's about each car. So once you determine that, if you say, Deshaun, I'm not keeping eight years, there's two strategies for high mileage drivers so that y'all can stop putting all this money in the cars, having tons of negative equity. I've been working with y'all for years. I spent 14 years in the business, in the car business, and I've seen the damage that high mileage drivers are faced with. Ten to $15,000 of negative equity. Why? You have these five and six year loans like regular people, like regular drivers, but you're not a regular driver. So when you go to trade your car in or replace it rather, you now have tons of negative equity because you still owe two to three years on your loan, but your car has 150 or 200,000 miles on it. The better plan to not take those kind of losses is to either do a high mileage lease. You're going to see that when you and, and some of you have heard the story. I've talked about this where I first learned this when I was working for Hyundai for a couple of weeks. I was a manager at Hyundai. I ended up leaving because the owner ended up going to jail. Wasn't the right place. You talk about a highway dealer. <laughs> I've worked for a, a highway dealer, but this was like highway in every sense of the word, you know? Like, so, you know, it hits the owner end up going to jail. When, when the owner of the dealership gets indicted, you know, so I so but I witnessed this high mileage lease customer. He was returning his lease. Prior to that, I didn't even understand high mileage leases. So he was dropping off his car 75, almost 75,000 miles. He said, Listen, Deshaun, I've been doing this for years. I'm like, this is amazing to me. He said, This is what I pay. I pay a little extra per month to get the 30 to get 25,000 miles a year. Every time I come in, I drop it off. And I was like, wow, I got to tell everybody I know about this because it was way uh, less money invested than had he purchased that Hyundai and just took a loan on it or even paid cash and just depreciated the heck out of it and brought it back with 75000 So you could do a high mileage lease. That's one strategy, I teach. But you need to shop for your lease with standard. No matter what you shop for, I don't care if you're driving 15, 18, 10,000 miles per year, 25,000 miles per year, you always shop with 12. Because when you shop your offers with 12, you can now judge the offers. Your goal is to find the dealer that's going to win the bid. They're going to beat everybody else. And then you have that dealer adjust the mileage because you've identified the honest dealer. You have them adjusted to 25 or 30 or whatever you need. And then you make your choice. We've had, I've had tons of people who switched this model and what it allowed them to do is actually see how much their car was costing. You don't know how much you're losing until you do this. When you do this and you're like, wow, I only pay this. It's, 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 it's powerful to know how much money is coming out of your bank account every year or every three years for your car. High mileage lease is one option. Now here's the second option. Second option is for people who are like Deshaun, I kind of want to have a nice car though. I want to, 
I don't want to necessarily, some people say, Deshaun, I, I put tons of mileage on my car and I want to get me something nice now. What should I do? This is the second strategy. This is also in my book. I call this two cars, one payment. What we're going to do is we're going to use one car or we're going to use the car we own. That's going to be our mileage car. So we're going to, we're not going to go lease. We're going to buy a car or keep our car, pay it off. And then as soon as that car is paid off, we're going to go lease our nice car and we're going to split the mileage between the two. So I might do 15,000 a year on my mileage car and I might do a lease for 12,000 and keep my payment manageable. So I got one payment, but I can have, I could drive as much as I want. I, I, do, I do, you know, my nice car a couple of days a week. I do my mileage car a couple of days a week. I got one payment, keeping a lot of money in my household, no negative equity ever. Both of those plans for the short term high mileage driver are absolutely wonderful. You just choose which one you work. OK, that's what we do. Now, this is all everything I teach you all is in my book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. It's a digital book, so it could be in your inbox in literally minutes. It's 75 percent off while we're on the broadcast for the next 30 minutes. Just click the link in my TikTok bio, click the link in my Instagram bio or go to Deshaun'sBook.com and get your 75 percent off. Use this now. Every, now, there's no hidden info in there that you won't see in my hundreds of social media videos. But the thing about it is some of you don't want to you see, what we, yo, it's all in there. You don't want to be looking at high mileage videos and leasing videos and used car videos trying to find what's for you. If you could do that, go do it. It's all there. If you want it all in one spot, step by step, then grab your copy of 75 percent off. Go ahead, Dola. Shoot the next question in. All right. How do you get the banks to bid? Are you telling banks you're shopping around? You can't. It's not usually going to change their terms because banks usually have a specific rate term they're going to do. Now, what you do is you're not letting we're talking about the bank bidding war. Could y'all keep shooting the lights up on TikTok? I appreciate y'all. I see y'all. And thanks to all the sharers. I appreciate everybody who's sharing this. So you are not letting anyone run your credit until after you have agreed to purchase. This is very important. No one needs your credit. They will. They might make you think they do. And if you give them your credit, if you put your social security number on anything, because some of you have to own this, you don't want to. If you I've had people that wrote me, wrote uh, DM me and said, Deshaun, they ran my credit. No one can run your credit without your permission. You must give them your social security number in order to do it. So you don't give them any of that until you have agreed to purchase something. So once you've agreed, which means somebody has won the bid, you've seen all the offers. If you're shopping for a used car, you've seen all the options. Now you are locking up your deal. You know, I'll take it. Now what you're going to do is take that purchase agreement. You're going to go home and you are going to call your bank or your credit union. You're going to go on online uh, uh, online auto loan banks. There's Community Credit Union. There's Lightstream. You're going to let everybody get a shot at this because there's something called the rate window where the credit bureaus allow you up to 45 days. Now, if you do it this way, it'll only take you two days, maybe even one. Here's what you're doing. Uh, an unlimited amount of lenders can access your credit with a hard pull within that window. When the window closes, it will only weigh on your credit as one hard inquiry. You will see the inquiries, but in terms of the effects on your score, it will only weigh it will only weigh as one hard inquiry. So that's what you want. And after you get those bits, somebody's going to win that. Uh, this is uh, this is round two. Round one is actually when we check to see if there's any special interest rates, because once you're shopping for your car, you always if you're going to get a loan, you always want to check to see if there's any special interest rates from the manufacturer. Zero percent, point nine nine percent. That's that's that I call round one. The bank bidding war is three rounds. Round one is special interest rate. If you see zero percent, everything else is obsolete. If you see point nine nine percent. Everything else is obsolete. There's no need for round two and three because no one's going to beat it. Once you get to round two, you're at home, your bank, your credit union, online lenders bidding. Now, whoever wins that, you're then going to call the dealership because your car's on hold and say, hey, 
I just got X percent from my bank, my credit union. If you guys can beat it, I give you the business. They're going to appreciate that. They've already won the bid, worked hard to beat their competition to sell you the car. Now you're giving them a chance to see if they can beat your, uh, the other banks. And that finance manager is going to call their banks and say, hey, look, I need this interest rate. Can you can you beat this? I got it. I'm trying to beat this. Now you have people fighting for you to win your business. And they might call you and say, listen, I couldn't beat it. You got a good rate. You got a great rate, in which case it gives you peace of mind of knowing that no bank could beat this rate. That means you got a below mark. You got the lowest rate in the market. Or they might call you and say, hey, good news. You had a great rate, but I beat it. I got such and such to beat it. And now not only does that save you money, they can actually save you time because you don't have to go through your bank. So that's the bank bidding war takes literally 45 minutes to do. And you, the money you're going to save and the control you're going to have is incredible. That's the bank bidding war. That's how we do it. You must do it right. If you don't do it right, then you did it wrong. <laughs> Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one. All right. Come on in, everybody. Tag one person. I'm telling you, you don't want your friends mad at you when they find out you've been you've been on this live and you ain't tell them about me. It's, and they buying a car. They might be buying a car this weekend, struggling, and you sitting up here not telling your friends about it. <laughs> Go ahead, Dolan. All right, everybody, just keep typing your questions. I got Dolan pulling questions from all four platforms. All right, this is TikTok. I have a lease with no equity, high mileage. Should I return or keep? Mrs. Marshall, very rarely is it going to make sense to keep your lease. Because like I always say, y'all, when you're buying your lease, what are you buying? Who knows? When you're buying your lease, if you buy your lease out, what are you buying? What type of car? Who knows? I'm going to keep, uh, <laughs> look, Justin said, greedy with this knowledge, right? <laughs> Go ahead. All right. So you're buying a used car. That's what you're buying. So when you go from leasing, yes, Mike, great day there. Thanks for tap tapping in. So when you're buying, you're, when you're buying a used car, it has to be a serious shift in how you're going to approach when you go from having a new car, which is a lease that you're paying a little bit of money for, typically almost you know, almost hassle free because you're always under warranty and you're driving a brand new car, latest and greatest technology, latest and greatest safety features to go from that to purchasing a used car. You need to be clear that something has changed. Here's an example. You know what? I just want to buy something. I want to pay it off and I want to keep it forever. If that's you, then buy the lease, because if you don't, what you're going to find, if that's not you, what you're going to find is you're going to put this time, let me tell you, let me tell you a quick, quick story of how I found out buying your lease was horrible. You know, and, and all of this stuff that I'm teaching is from me being in a dealership, seeing horrible situations, asking questions, and then saying, oh, that's how we got into that situation. So somebody coming to the dealership, they got a five-year-old car. And I look at them and they're like, hey, um, you know, I'm looking to trade this. I want to get something new. And I'm like, okay, cool. Got a five-year-old car. If you're trading this, I probably I'm going to talk to you about leasing because you don't understand leasing. You paid a lot of money. So now I'm thinking like, OK, you had it. How long have you had it? Oh, I bought it brand new. Perfect. All right. So it's probably almost paid off. Wouldn't you think that a car that somebody's had for five years, if they if they if they got it when it was new, shouldn't it be the paid off or almost paid off? Right. So I ask them what you know, how much you owe on it? No, I don't. I don't really know. I don't know the exact. No problem. So I have the used car manager go out, look at the car. Used car manager might come back and say, okay, I think the car's worth 18. All right, perfect. So now I call the person's bank and I'm like, hey, I'm calling for Mr. Johnson. I'm trying to find out, you know, how much he owes because he's interested in replacing this car. We want to pay it off for him. And they say, okay, yeah, his, his, his balance is $18,300. Now that I'm totally shocked. Just like some of you, like, wait, hold on. How could he have had the car five years and he still owes, he still owes 18 grand? And I, I would ask him, Mr. Johnson, they're saying you still owe 18,000. How is this possible? And he's like, oh, well, what happened was I had bought, I had leased the car. And then at the end of the three-year lease, I bought it. And, and, I, and, and I took out a loan, which is what most people are going to do. And it's usually a five or six-year loan, usually six. So you got three years to lease it that he's paying. 
and then you got six years, which means a total of nine years of payments on the same car. Very rarely will this ever make sense. And so what you want to do is start looking and saying, the only way it makes sense for me to purchase this lease is if I'm going to keep this thing a long time, because at the end of the day, I'm probably going to give about five or six, I'm probably going to give about eight or nine years of payments on the same car, which is just, I mean, would any of you, any, we got a bunch of smart people on here. We probably got about 400 people between all the platforms. Would any of you buy a car and take out a nine year loan? Would you volunteer for that? No, look, I see no's all over. That's what you're doing in most times when you're buying your lease out. Now, if you're going to pay cash for the lease at the end, okay, that's different. I still wouldn't do it. I would still look to this, to shop for an aggressive lease and shop for a new lease. Most people are buying their leases out because they don't know how to find a good deal on the next lease. That's a fixable problem. So like I said, rule of thumb, if you're going to buy your lease, just say, all right, I'm keeping this car. I love this car so much. You know what? I leased it. I fell in love with this thing. I'm going to keep this thing until the wheels fall off. And that's a reason to buy the lease. All right. Go ahead. Next next question, Dolan. You know, we got to go deep sometimes. So if you want to listen, if you want everything I teach in one spot, I put out my new digital book. It's called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. Some people say, Deshaun, why isn't it a print book? It's because everything that changes in the car market, I have to update. If we're using a script, because you, you see my scripts are in the book. So you're, when you're typing, you're typing what Deshaun is saying. It's not what Judy's saying. No offense to you, Judy. I want you to use what I say and then judge it. You know, you want to add your own stuff to it later, then do that. And you probably won't. But in order for me to keep updating, like Vroom went out of business two months ago, if I had books in print, I wouldn't have been able to update. Now you got a book that's no longer relevant or that part isn't. Digital books, I can update it on the fly to make sure whenever you go to use that book, the information in it is totally relevant. All right. And for our launch is 75 percent off. It's normally ninety seven dollars. If you if for the next 30 minutes, you can go to the uh, you can go to my TikTok bio, my Instagram bio or Deshaun's dot com. Or if you're watching on TV, scan the QR code with your phone and grab your 75 percent off. OK, go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one. All right. Let's keep the questions coming in. All right. This is from Instagram. How can I lease without a high down payment? Very simple. Don't believe that you need a high down payment. In fact, don't believe that you need a down payment at all. Here's what you should be doing. Everybody who's going to be shopping for a lease, you should be, once you decide what you want, you should be getting your offers with first month's payment total out of pocket. This doesn't, I don't want you to use the words down payment anymore. I want you to, I want you to use total out of pocket. When you say total out of pocket, it's hard to mix up. In the car business, when I was in the dealership, what I saw is the term down payment didn't include taxes fees. Some of you, I mean, who, it, it, you, you know, you may have experienced a time where you told the dealer, I only want to put 2000 down. Now you get your offer back or you see the end of the final paperwork. Sometimes, I mean, the worst dealers will even let you go into the finance office and you're thinking I'm putting 2000 down. And what happens when you get there? <laughs> you can just type a mad emoji if you on your if you on your mobile phone. They tell you what? Yeah, 2000 down. But how are you going to pay the taxes? Right. Yeah, it's 2000 down, but then you got to pay your first month's payment and your motor vehicle fees, right? We don't want that to ever happen, which means we have to be very intentional with the language we use. Total out of pocket. Look, <laughs> I see you good time. Total out of pocket means this is what I said, the total out of pocket. You could also use total due at signing. Those two, two terms can, do, can be used, you know, interchangeably but you're going to shop your lease offers, you are going to tell them what, how you're going to customize. The lease is custom. The mileage is custom. I know who, who was taught they limit you with the lease mileage. Be honest. Just type me. If you were taught that they limit you, like, okay, some people were taught you could only get 10,000 miles a year with a lease. Some people were taught they pick the mileage on the lease. Some people were taught 
they picked the down payment on the lease. All right, be honest. All right, all right. So we're gonna just like good news. All none of that's true. You pick the mileage on the lease. You can get almost any mileage you want. Most most manufacturers, we talked about it a couple minutes ago, will go up to 30,000 miles a year on the mileage. So you get the mileage you need, the mileage you're going to use. And then the down payment, you customize. So when now if you leave it to them, then they'll customize it for you. But when we go in and get our offers, the way you're getting your offers is first month's payment total out of pocket. And you're going to do that with at least five dealers. If you're doing it the manual way I mentioned earlier, you're going to have five sales managers work up the offers for you. If you're doing it my way, we're connecting. You're using my 25 to 5 strategy. You're connecting with 25 dealers online, and we are telling them what we want. And, and we are going to tell them, this is how I want the lease offer presented to me. First month's payment only. And that's it. Most of, look, look, let's um look at Danielle. Danielle. She leased her Audi. Look, it, you, you can't see it on TikTok. You will be. If you're watching the rebroadcast, the rebroadcast we put out later, 530. If you're watching the rebroadcast, then you'll see uh, Danielle, 550 a month, first payment down. Included maintenance, her Audi was 44175 Now, I know that sounds crazy, but that, that was an offer that a dealer had to beat that. That wasn't just her. She didn't go into one dealer and they said, yeah, we'll give you this Audi, brand new Audi for, you know, five fifty dollars a month. She shot multiple offers like we teach. This is in my private Facebook group. I have a couple of people that I coach around the country and we always report our deals. Most of the deals y'all are ever going to see me share will always be with zero down, first month payment down. Because here's the thing to remember, if you can find a car and get the deal you want with no money down or, you know, you want to you want to do that. You only want to put money down when you found your deal, but you want to lower the payment a little bit. That's the only time for money down. If it's in your budget with no money down, you know, drive that car off the lot. And that's what a lot of people do, especially with leases. Uh, all right, Dolan, shoot the next one in. Let me put the banner back up. All right. Keep the questions coming. y'all. We're pulling questions from everywhere. And make sure you are telling your friends, meet us live 12 and 3 Eastern time. They can meet us anywhere they're at on any of these four platforms. If you see somebody and they're like, listen, I got to buy a car soon. You say, listen, Deshaun is doing this show. This is guy, Deshaun Autobiography. He's doing this live show 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock Eastern time, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. All right. Tell them to come. Or they can watch the rebroadcast that we put out in the evening. All right. Uh, this is YouTube. Well, I have to purchase the book again when you make updates. Great question, Serenity. Nope, absolutely not. Listen, y'all. And look, God bless. I'm not talking about any other author. If there's some, look, because honestly, the reason I did a digital book is to prevent that. Most authors, what? How many books have we seen? Volume nine, you know, 2028 edition. You get what I'm saying? It's because the book is in print. If the book is in print, the only way that I can update it is to print a new version, which you have to buy. But in the case of digital, y'all, when you open that file, you could open it a year from now. If I change anything in that book, if there's one word change because it's not relevant, if there's one website that we're no longer using or there's a new website that comes out that we're going to add to our arsenal, it's going to be in there. So that's the beautiful thing about a digital book. One time, and you get it for 70 That's why at $97, it's a phenomenal value. We had tons of people pay $97 who wrote me and said, Deshaun, this is the best investment. I have one of the best books I ever bought. Um, but at 75% off, it's just like, wow. And, you know, enjoy. Even better. All right, Dolan, shoot the next one in. Uh, can you get a lease without the disposition fee or lease turning fee? That's a great question. So uh, disposition fee, y'all, is a fee to get the, when you drop off your lease, the dealer doesn't own the car anymore. I know some of you may have been, you know, you may have thought, cause I've saw people that said, uh, man, I can't afford the car. I just went and dropped it off at the dealer. I, I, went, I took the, car, the dealer back their car. It's not the dealer's car anymore. A lot of these things, the, the, I get a better deal for paying cash where they originate from. It's from the times where the dealers used to make the, uh, they used to have in-house loans. In-house loans. Wait, hold on. Hold on one second. There's a, there's a, there's somebody on TikTok that just said, that's the reason I won't lease. Dolan, pull that question in next. 
because I want to know what they're talking about over here. Okay. Because listen, I, I look, pull that question in next, but, um, when they originated, when they originated, um, you know, banks used to get dealers used to give loans. Dealers used to have the car. So they were the ones calling you, Hey, you missed the payment. And so people think that the dealer owns the car. Once the dealer sells you the car nowadays, the bank is the bank owns the car. They're the ones coming. So when you drop off your lease, you have to pay a fee if you're leaving that manufacturer to go to another one because that lease has that car has to get back to the bank. So that's just a that's just now if you sell the car, you don't pay the fee. If you sell your lease, if, if there's equity or if you could break even, you know, we teach the equity assessment process, then you don't pay the fee. But if you need to drop off your lease, then, yes, that's a fee that it's it's a it's a legitimate cost. All right. Pull that question in. What what are we talking about? Uh, because I've always been told the mileage. OK, so are you saying, Latasha, that you 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 you. Because she said that's the reason I won't lease because I always been taught been taught the mileage was limited. So are you saying that you've learned that the mileage is not limited and now you are like you have good information, or are you saying you're still operating with that information? Because we just went over that over the last ten minutes. We've talked about how the mileage is not limited. You pick the mileage, and frankly, if you are not keeping your cars eight years. You're all, you've already lost thousands of dollars not leasing. Unless you tell me, Deshaun, I buy $5,000 cars on Facebook Marketplace. I only, I buy $7,000, $10,000. There's something, you know, that's a strategy. So if you're one of those people, you could disregard what I say about leasing versus buying because that's a that's a strategy. My brother does that. He All he does is buy cars that he gets from three to 10 grand. He'll put work into them and he he pays pennies to drive cars. But if that's not you and you're not keeping, okay, she's still operating with that info. Okay. So what I would tell you, because I don't want to actually repeat something that we did, we said, we'll put the broadcast out at uh, 5.30 tonight. I will watch that part of the broadcast. You could watch it on YouTube, Instagram, wherever you're at. Um, but you don't, um, you don't want to operate with that information. That's what we spent uh, the last 10 minutes kind of... Uh, dispelling a lot of the information that you're operating with that's costing you is actually not accurate and that's 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 the bad part if it was true keep moving but you don't want to be moving with bad information go ahead dolan shoot the next one in then you just i think you just had one up from facebook but whichever one you pull in is fine uh does credit change the 1.5.5 percent rule you preach about and how much options you have to get a good loan uh sure certainly um, you typically want to be in that fair to high range when it comes to, you know, 670 and up. That's typically, and here's what I say, you know, when people are buying a house, what do you typically do? If you know you're buying a house, you get ready to buy a house, right? There's people, some of you have bought a house and, and, and didn't you tighten up the credit a little bit? Cause you had a goal. Now, if you're in an emergency situation, then this is different. You get told your car gets totaled, car gets stolen. These are emergency situations. Totally understand. But if you're thinking about purchasing a car, then and you know that you're in that you know low 600 range, or you know, I would tell you to go to work on your credit. Follow Shonda Martin on she's on every platform. Road to 750 plus. Uh, you know, one day I hope to get her on here. Uh, you know, as we start bringing in um, complimentary guest there's a couple of people that i have in mind that i want to get that i want to introduce y'all to that have just incredible information but you should be learning from her and get your credit up to that point where you could actually uh get out of that manipulation zone 670 680 690 you're in the safe range to get approved for uh for most tier one leases um and you're in the safe range to get approved for uh for loans you know but if you're if you're uh the 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 less control you have over your car loan the more you can be manipulated. So if you're in that other range of a lower range, then you probably, I teach people if you're not, if you're not, all right, some people don't have the credit to lease right now. That doesn't mean you go purchase a $30,000 car. When you, if you say, Dag, if I had the credit, I would be leasing. The last thing you want to do is go and buy a 20 or 30 or $40,000 car because what that's going to do is bury you. You're going to pay higher interest. And then when you go to trade out in two years, which is so what I teach is you get the least expensive car you could get a loan on. You get a great car 
but the least expensive car. You get a sacrifice car, I'm going to set myself up. I'm not going to go buy the big vehicle because I know in two years, I'm going to flip out of this into a brand new lease and I'm going to have that payment history. So when I go apply for my lease, I get approved. But if you go and get yourself the Dodge Charger with the Hemi engine or you want the Hellcat, Scat Pack, all, mm, you won't be leasing. And not only will you not be leasing, you'll be buried in that car in two years because the interest you're going to pay on it is going to delay any goals that you have financially. So you either could shine now and lose later. And you're really not shining when you're in a Hellcat with a with a 19 percent interest rate or 22 percent interest rate. You're not shining. You're very dull. So when we're going to talk about financial literacy, everything I'm saying is not going to be. Like, it's not going to be like, oh, that's what I want to hear. But it's going to be, yeah, that's what I need to hear. That's the smart move right there. All right. Um, go ahead, Dolan. Next question. Okay. Appreciate everybody. I see y'all sharing. I appreciate all the sharers. Thank y'all so much. And thank you to everybody who's sending gifts. I see y'all. Um, I appreciate you supporting the broadcast and this mission. I received mail from a dealership. They want to buy my car with top dollars. Can you explain what that means? They haven't even seen your car. So it's a marketing message. Who got who has dealers either emailing it? Look, look, now this question's from YouTube. All right, we're taking questions from all four platforms. So just keep typing and while we're on, we'll be rotating. Who's got dealers calling them right now, blowing up your phone saying, please bring your car in? If they're it just 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 type me if they're if they're calling you, if they're emailing you, or if you even got a letter saying we want to pay top dollar for your car. T look, okay. So <laughs> lots of you. All right. The reason why they want to do that is because they want to see, they want to be the first person that makes an offer on your car. They don't want you to see the other offers. So we never, look, a dealer is always the last offer for our car, never our first. So what you do, this is our, this is called the equity assessment. Many of you who learned from me already, you've been on some broadcasts, you got the book, you've seen my videos. Equity assessment is once you decide whether you lease or buy, that's step one. Step two is the equity assessment. We got to find out what our current car is worth. What is our position in it? Is it a positive where we could put some money in our pocket or is it a break even or is it a negative? Now, on a lease, you don't have a negative equity. So it's not it's just you might not be able to make any money or break even. But on a finance, you can have negative equity. So now you're just getting your offers from the cash buyers that we teach. We talked about it. I mentioned them earlier. And then you're going to find out how much you owe. So you want to know what your equity position is before anyone else tells you. You never want to be on here talking about Deshaun. The dealer told me I don't have any equity. You did that wrong. We find out if we have equity. And the way you do that is by calling your bank and getting your payoff and then getting offers from the online buyers. That'll tell you right there if you have equity or not. All right? You, it's, you, go ahead, Dolan, shoot the next one up. Y'all see, we're in control. There's never anyone, that's the reason why, look, hold on, before you put that up, let me show, look. I wanna just show you some of these offers. All right, I wanna show you some of these deals because when you look at below market deals, this is, this is Vincent. All right, Vincent got a three-year-old um, matter of fact, no, let's go to, let's go to something where, cause that's a below market pre-owned car deal. Let's go to, do I have anything here with equity? I'll put some equity in. All right. When you look at something like this, like Charles got a Hyundai Palisade, this, this is probably all through the pandemic. This was the car that people overpaid for the most. And they're still overpaying for it. When you look at this, he's leasing this. This is a $48,000 car, $48,595 to be exact. If you're watching on the rebroadcast, you'll be able to see this on TikTok. Everyone else, you can see this. He's paying $597 a month for a almost $50,000 car. Now, every $5,000, just so, so we can be clear on how much this car would have cost had he purchased it. Because only a few people on here understand the magnitude of the money that comes out of your house when you purchase versus the magnitude of the money that stays in your bank account when you get a great lease deal. 
Had he purchased this car, every $5,000 is how much per month? Thank you, Coconut. I see you. He came in real quick. Every $5,000 is 100 bucks a month. So this Palisade, you have many people out here driving Palisades. They didn't put much money down and they're paying 100, they're paying 900 to 1100 bucks a month. If they put a lot of money down, like 15 grand, maybe they're paying like seven something, throwing ridiculous money at these cars. He's paying 597. So not only is the does the deal need to be on the right foundation, he would have never gotten anywhere near this. That's why I say if you if you were supposed to lease and you purchased, there's no way to get a great deal. Y'all see now what I mean when I say that? Look at Danielle. As you saw Danielle earlier. Look at Kimberly with her Maserati. She's driving an $80, $86,000 Maserati and she's paying $968 a month. 36 months. An $86,000 Maserati. They sold it to her. First of all, she saved 20 grand. Getting multiple offers, she saved 20 grand. And her lease payment is $968 a month. Had she purchased that car, $66,000 was the selling price. That would be, what's that, 15 grand? That would be $1,300 a month, y'all. That would be $1,300 a month. So when, when you don't lease, when you should have leased, there's no way to get a great deal. So you got to put your deal on the right foundation. And then once your deal's on the right foundation, you're shopping multiple offers because you need to get the best offer in the market. You need to get the below market deal. All right. And this is all in my book. If y'all want to make sure you have everything step by step, Deshaun, I love the video. I don't even want to come back to a live anymore. I just want all the information in one spot for me. That's car shopping for people that hate car shopping. My new digital book, you can get it for 75% off for the next 30 minutes. Go to my TikTok bio. As long as that timer hasn't hit zero yet, you can get it. You won't pay the $97 price. And you can go to my Instagram bio or you can go to Deshaun'sBook.com or you can scan the QR code. Either way, any one of those four ways, get your 75% off and use it. And make sure you make sure you DM me and write me with your deals. I want to see your deals. I want to hear your success stories. All right, go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next question up. We still got questions coming from every platform. This one's from Instagram. I bought a Lincoln, a 23 Lincoln Nautilus. I want to trade it in as I do not like it. I put $20,000 down. Can you trade it in or will I lose too much? Mm. All right. Y'all heard this question. Now, the thing about it is you're not going to have a lot of negative equity depending on how much you pay for the car. Now, I don't want to assume that because I don't know how good of a deal you got. Is it possible in the wake of the pandemic sales and the way people were overpaying during the, that you could have overpaid? Yeah, it's possible. But let's just assume you got a you got a you got a decent deal, right? You're not going to have a lot of negative equity but you're not going to get this money back. When you run, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to call the bank, find out how much you owe. You'll, you're going to know in a matter of minutes how much of a hit you need to take. Call your bank, find out how much you owe and get your, get your online offers. Go to CarMax, go to Carvana, go to Driveway, go to AutoNation, go to KBB Instant Cash Offer, go to CarGuru, sell my car, get those cash offers. Whoever's the highest, compare it to what you owe. Um, you're probably you're not going to like it at the end of the day, but that's going to help you choose whether. All right, can I live with this thing for a little bit more? Um, buying a car and trading it in in a year, two years, three years, four years, especially a new car, is just a it's just a big loss. It's a big loss. You must hate the car enough to take that loss. All right, but I want you to know what your equity position is, so you'll be able to see what you're going to do. And uh, because you put so much down, you, you like I said, you're probably not going to have negative equity. Um, but then once you look at how much you're getting back, you might that might that might make you say, man, do I really want to lose 15, 20 grand for a car that I only had for whatever? All right. So that's your first step. I mean, feel free to come in, chime in with another live. Uh, if you want to jump on the show, we'll be back. You know, we do two shows a day um, today. So if you want to come back. 
you want to do it, we can talk about it later. But that's that's always the first step, y'all. Whenever you want to trade your car, whenever you want to replace your car, that's always the step. Equity assessment, always. All right, this is Instagram. Um, can you sell a lease while still having remaining payments? Absolutely. Just follow the equity assessment process. And then when you call your bank for a lease, you're going to ask them, do I have a third party restriction? So you're going to get those offers that I just talked about with Elizabeth. And then you're going to call your bank and say, do I have a third party restriction? Now, if they say yes, that doesn't mean you can't sell the lease. That means it, you're restricted on who you can sell it to. You can sell it, but you can only sell it to a dealer of the same brand. We still get bids, but now we get bids from used car managers. So when we have a third party restriction, I've helped tons of people. David is probably the first person I can remember when I started my um, when I started my video library, because everything I do in the book, I have in a video library as well. And I have a coaching program. When I first started that, David was the first person. He had a BMW and he came in and, it, it, you know, this is when people were buying their leases and reselling them because they were like, wow, Carvana wants to pay this, but I got, I'm going to buy it and then resell it to them. Problem with buying it and reselling, you got to pay taxes, which is thousands of dollars comes out of your profit. And then you got to pay fees and the applicable fees to purchase it comes out of your profit. When you sell direct to a dealership, a used car manager, you don't pay those fees. So we'll take those offers that we get because you don't want to go in and you know call these used car managers. This is also in my book. Everything's in my book, the script, what to say to the used car manager. We just tell them, hey, we want to sell our car to a local dealership. We're just calling a couple of places to make sure we get a fair offer. And you, the reason why we don't talk to anybody but the used car managers, because the used car manager's job is to purchase vehicles. That's their job. So, you know, you talk to a salesman and you tell them you want to buy you. Hey, I'm thinking I want to sell my car. What is the salesman going to say? You know, you, you, you know, it's, hey, well, you know, when can you come in? You know, are you are you replacing it? Can I show you some? No, you talk to a used car manager because the used car manager's job is to purchase nice cars. When you call them with a two or three year old car, it's a lease. That's inventory that they're interested in. But you got to do it with at least three to five because some of them will lowball you or some or sometimes the car is just not worth it to them. Sometimes a car is worth more to another dealer than it is to a to one dealer. So that's the reason why we get bids always. But when we have a third party restriction, we get them from the used car manager. If there's no third party restriction, then we simply just put the car. We just sell the car to the highest online bidder. All right. Go ahead, Dolan. Keep them coming. Got a couple more minutes. All right. Everybody getting value out of the show so far. If you're getting value, just type a bunch of ones in the chat. If you're getting value, this is the listen. We call this the warm up. Eventually, we're thinking maybe next week or in the next two weeks, we're going to have official episodes. You know, it'll be like episode one, two. But we got a lot of things we're setting up and structuring before we start calling it episodes. Um, one of the things we're getting clear on so that you can actually tell your friend is timing. We don't, you know, if you don't know when we're going to be live with the show, then you can't tell somebody you just, you know, but when you know, we're live at 12 Eastern time, we're live at 3, 3 PM Eastern time. Then those who want to join the live show can meet us here. If you can't join the live show, then you could always say, Hey, the episode premieres at 5 30 or eight or uh, 8 30 in the evening. So we want to make sure we're covering every part of the country those on the West Coast and those on the East Coast. So I see all the ones. Glad everybody's getting value. Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot that next question up. This is TikTok. Did you already talk about what's happening with Tesla's used car prices? What are your thoughts? You know what, y'all? Depreciation. Depreciation. If, you, if you've been on the show lately, I told you your biggest expense is depreciation. And here's the, here's the dangerous part about buying cars. A couple years ago, Escalades were the were the top 10 biggest depreciating cars made, which means if you paid 90 grand for an Escalade in three years, it was worth like almost half. It was worth like 50. You lost ridiculous money and there was nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. Not only is a lease for the short term, because if you're a long-term person, remember, if we keeping this and getting out of that depreciation scale, 8, 10, 12 years to the wheels fall off, you don't care about short term depreciation. See, when you're when you have picked the right foundation, the things that's worrying people with the wrong foundation don't worry you. 
But if you're on the right found, if you're on the wrong foundation and you purchase one of these cars and something happens in the market or something happens with the company stock price and the values of that car drops, you got to eat it. If you lease that vehicle, doesn't mean a thing. Vehicle could drop to zero. Don't matter because I'm paying a great monthly payment for it. And in three years, I'm out of this thing. I enjoyed it. Great. Let the people who bought it deal with the fact it lost so much value. Who wins in that instance? People who purchased them secondary. People who are purchasing them as used cars. See, the owners who bought them new lose. The people who are buying them pre-owned, think about what I just said with the Escalade. If you were shopping for an Escalade and it was the top 10 depreciated cars, you could get a three-year-old Escalade for almost half of what a new one was. The second owner wins, but the first owner loses. So le leasing is also a hedge against depreciation. We're, now, here's what's beautiful. I'm going to give you another benefit. Let's just say you have one of the top cars that hold its value. Top 10, top 20 cars that hold their value. You can sell it and put money in your pocket. It's the best of both worlds. If the price of the vehicle goes down, I win. I don't lose. If the price of the vehicle stays high, I win because I'm going to sell it. This is what Dave Ramsey just, Dave Ramsey, man, I swear. Listen, he did a lot of people dirty, man. I love Dave because he's helping people eliminate debt and invest in the stock market. God bless you, Dave. But when it comes to these, these cars, my man, you don't know enough. Just because you bought 20 cars and you got a bunch of money, you don't know enough. Not to be telling people with the conviction you talk the advice you give, you're costing people thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. All right, go ahead. That's it. Go ahead. Next question, Dolan. Let's keep it going. We got a couple more minutes before we wrap. Go ahead. Next question, Dolan. <laughs> I have a 2022 Chevy Malibu. It's assessed $5,000 below the loan value. Is it worth trading? Do you want to move? Do you want to, do you want to take the negative negative equity hit? Now, your purpose for trading needs to be, all right, if you're going to take that type of loss and roll over negative equity, you, 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 you it's only two reasons. Either this car doesn't fit my needs anymore. And look, in my book in step four, it's something called shopping, not buying. We're not spending enough time. And I know some people, I don't want you to judge people who are writing these questions and they're saying, yo, I bought this car and I want to trade it in or I want to replace it in a year or two. But we got to do a better job of picking our cards. We got to stop letting, if you use what I'm telling you, no one should ever rush you again. I don't care if you have an emergency. You can get a car in a couple of days using what I teach. But you should not be picking cars and taking a car home that you don't like. Because you are going to lose money if you replace it. It's no two days about it. You're going to lose money. Big money, too. Not $100, thousands of dollars, 20%. You're going to lose. So if you're doing that because one that car doesn't fit your needs anymore, sometimes you needed a bigger car because, you you know, you you just you didn't have kids. And then, you, you, you know, you just had triplets, changes in a heartbeat. I was going to keep this car long term. But then, you know, my, we have we need a bigger car. So I'll deal with the negative equity, but the next car I buy is going to be a family vehicle. We're going to keep it long term. If that's not the case, then we shouldn't just be switching cars because you, we're not taking enough time to choose a car, especially if you if, if you remember what the most important question is, y'all. How many years am I keeping this next car? That's the first one. When you open my book, when you hear me talk about the most important question, it's the first thing you ask yourself. If your children, if your spouse comes to you and say, man, you know what? I want a new car, man. I want, I'm trying to, I'm, you know, I'm trying to see where should I start? Start with this question every time. How many years are you going to keep the next car? Oh, only a couple. Because if you say 8, 10, 12, that's going to make sure you choose something that you're going to love for 8, 10, or 12 years. And if you're not keeping it that long, then 
but any and it doesn't matter. We got to pick our cars better. Okay? Like we got to stop letting I have a whole step in my book, shopping not buying where it's like, yo, you're about to spend 10 to $100,000 some of you. You deserve if you walked into the mall right now and you were going to make a $30,000 decision. 30,000 you walked into the mall right now. How would you want them to treat you? <laughs> I want to hear from everybody. See, you see, you don't realize you've been doing the same thing. You walk into a dealership, you're making a $30,000 decision. You're making a $30,000 transaction, $50,000 decision. How would you want them treating any business? If you walked in anywhere and you were about to make a decision, that was a $50,000 decision. Some people like Deshaun, man, if it was five grand, I want to be treated like royalty. I don't want to be rushed. Look, she was that special. Absolutely. So you can't rush yourself. You can't let anyone rush you because you have to start treating. If you want to win, and I mean keep all the money in your household, save all the money, you really have to start treating your car purchase as a long-term decision. Even if you're leasing, you have to start approaching. It can't be, oh, man, I'm just going to do this on a whim. That's how we lose, Okay. But yeah, unfortunately, you know, if, if you want to switch car, now if you're saying Deshaun, I want to go into a lease, that's that's okay. If you're saying Deshaun, you know what, I'm not keeping this car eight years. I, I got a loan on it, but I'm thinking I want to switch out of it now and start leasing. Make the move. As long as it's not too much negative equity, where it's gonna eliminate your ability to get approved for the lease, because you can't put 10 grand of negative equity on a thirty thousand dollar car. It's something called loan to value ratios. As long as it's not going to blow out the loan to value ratio, make the move. There's no benefit of you staying in the finance when you know you should be in a lease. All right. Good to see you, Ferris. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one in. Got another five minutes this episode. Instagram, I think we're going to end early because when we post the episode, they only have uh, they only give us an hour for the episode. But you'll be able to see the whole episode on YouTube or Facebook when we post it or TikTok. Is the price of the book 75% off $97? No, it's actually, Sheila, you might have missed the countdown. Um, hmm. so let me reset it. If you missed the countdown, let me let me actually see if I can reset it, actually, because sometimes it doesn't reset. Um, $97 is the original price. The special price is 75% off of that. So, no. Um, there you go. All right, see if it resets now. Uh, try it now. If not, then, uh, yeah, get there, y'all. Go get your 75% off. <laughs> Go to my TikTok bio, download your copy, get your 75% off. Go to my Instagram bio, download your copy, get your 75% off. All right, go ahead, uh, Dolan. I just hit the reset button. Let me know if it reset for y'all. Uh, go ahead, Sheila. All right, uh, this one's from Facebook. I know this may be off topic. Does your book tell us how to purchase a vehicle under 10K for cash? Uh, that's something I call, I call them smart cars. And that, that stand, now it's not those little smart cars. We, I call it a uh, saving money at the right time. If you're going to purchase that type of car, because I'm not going to go into detail on that because it's an entire strategy. Um, this is when, because if I'm purchasing cars under 10 grand, not only am I looking, so I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you some advice, um, uh, Alan and anybody who's going to be doing this, uh, because you, you know, and you could just, you could just use it as you want. Now, don't now remember what I said of how we qualify a good used car. I talked about it earlier in the show, title history. Service records, you must see service, lots of service records. Now, it can't be a gap for 20,000, 30,000 miles. There were no service records. Nope. And some of you say, Deshaun, well, what if they changed the oil on their own? What if they didn't? If I can't see it, then I, I can't trust it. So you're going title history, service records, accident history. Now, outside of that, if I'm looking, I'm not just looking on the marketplaces. In that price range, I'm looking on Facebook marketplace. So, you, you, you know, you want to add Facebook Marketplace to one of your marketplaces in that case. Um, and you want to have a great local mechanic or you could use a company like um, uh, yourmechanic.com. If you don't have a great local mechanic to inspect that car before you buy it, that's that's a must. That's a must. Um, you, 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 you have a great local mechanic and then just search because at that point, you're not always looking for brand. Sometimes you're shopping for price. 
when you're shopping over 10 grand, you're typically, you could typically shop for brand. Honda, this is what I want. I want a Honda Civic or I want a Nissan, or whatever it is. When you go under 10 grand, you could still do brand. Um, it just becomes a little harder. Uh, but other than that, use it the same way. The only reason it's not in my book is because it's an entire strategy. Like I said, my brother's a master at it. Like literally my brother, that's his business. And, um, you know, maybe one day I'll write a special edition from the book an add on for just that particular strategy. But until then, just, um, just take what I just gave you. And, you know, um, you take that, I take that serious. Because that is a strategy, y'all. Like, if, if you're on a fixed income or if you're a low income person and you say, Deshaun, my goal is to just have the least money possible. I don't need a new car. I'll drive an eight year, 10 year old car. The small, here's another thing I'll tell you, Alan. You pay for size. If a car was 25 grand brand new, you can find a relatively, you know, still good one for 10. If you're trying to get a car that was 50 grand brand new, then when you go to 10, you're going to probably get crap. So you don't want to, you want to go as small as possible and, you know, try to get something that was under 30 grand brand new so that at 10 or at nine, it's still quality. If you try to get a BMW that was 60 grand, you're going to get one with 110,000 miles, no warranty, and it's going to be crap. So use that as you can and be careful. All right. Um, go ahead. Uh, let's do two more and then we'll wrap. All right. Because we got to come back at three. All right. Um, go ahead. Are car loans similar to mortgage backed securities? In what way? Um, you, you know, uh, an, an, a car loan is an asset backed security. So the mortgage, the asset securing the mortgage is a house. In a car loan, the asset securing the loan is a car. So it's an asset-backed security. They resell those loans on the secondary market, but I'm not sure why you're asking the question. If there's something more in detail that you want to talk about, then, um, then I'll answer it. Go ahead, shoot one more up, and then we'll wrap. This is great. It's not showing seven. All right, put it, uh, Sheila. Uh, all right. I don't know. Listen, I don't know. She's like, it's not showing. Sure it's it. there's a cat. The minute you visit that page, everybody saw the timer, right? There's nothing, nothing like there's a 30 minute timer. It says at the end of 30 minutes, price goes back up to $97. So it's a special offer. You know, I tried to reset, but sometimes, you know, uh, it doesn't reset. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, maybe meet me on the next broadcast. I'll see if I can reset it, Sheila. Um, and ninety-seven dollars is worth every penny. Uh, it's actually worth thousands of dollars. So uh, you can't put a product out that's worth what you're paying. You, if it can't be worth ninety-seven dollars and you're charging ninety-seven dollars, no, it has to be worth thousands of dollars. And every one of you that write me, check out these reviews. Look, this is Goodreads. We're already at a four point nine four on Goodreads.com. We're already like five stars. Two people get, look, this one girl gave me a, a four-star review. God bless her. Because she's like, you know, I would have liked to talk to the author to ask him some questions. Listen, I got books on my shelf. I can't talk to any of these authors. You know, if it's a great book, it's a great book. But anyway, go ahead. It's all good. It's a, it's, it's So we're very highly rated. And, um, you know, it's going to be worth out. I want this to be one of the most valuable books you ever have. Like out of all the books you have, this one right here should be in the top one or two of the ones that save you the most money in your lifetime. All right. So go up to uh, my TikTok bio, grab your copy. As long as that timer is not zero, you got 75% off, or you can go to my Instagram bio, or you can go to Deshaun'sBook.com, or you can scan the QR code. Go ahead, Dolan, shoot that one in. Um, I see you, Alan. Thank you, brother. All right. Um, all right. What about rebates to eat the negative equity? Great question, Joe. Great question. Only bad thing is rebates. Are, all right. So this is a wonderful question right here. All right. So you take something, something like Jeep. Jeep, historically, Jeep Grand Cherokees have had two, three, four thousand dollar rebates. They don't always run them. And rebates, y'all, are on new cars, not used cars. What he's talking about is if you have negative equity, remember I was talking a few questions ago, gentleman asked about getting out of his car. And I said, well, you can't put 10 grand of negative equity on a $35,000 or $30,000 car, the loan to value. But there are some cars 
that are better to move to with negative equity because if you can get 7,000 off the price of the car because you have rebates, then you could bring all the negative equity over, you know, that you have. Now, the bad thing about this, one day I hope to really have a database where we know what rebates are. When we have thousands and thousands of people shopping at once, now we have hundreds. But when we have thousands like shopping at once and reporting the data to us, we can actually keep a record of, you know, hey, Jeep has $3,000 rebates. This company has $4,000. Hey, the electric rebate is $7,500. So if you were going to transfer negative uh, equity over, like take Greg, look at Greg's deal. So Greg got a 1.5, uh, uh, he got a under 1% lease on this Kia um, EV6. It's an electric vehicle win. It's, it's the win edition. He saved not just the $7,500 for the electric car rebate, but because of the bid. See, the rebate is not a dealer discount. We don't just get excited to see some people go in and the dealer, oh, I'm taking off the rebate. No, outside of the rebate, the dealer, is going to the whoever wins the bid gives us the biggest discount. So if a dealer who wins the bid gives us a $2,500 discount and then we get a $7,500 rebate, we save $10,000 off the price of the car. So if you were going to bring your negative equity over of $7,000 or $10,000, there you go. So if you can find a vehicle that ha it has a higher likelihood of having rebates, Jeep Grand Cherokee is a good one to try. Um, again, hopefully one day we'll have a database, but yes much easier when you shop your bids for you to get out of your car and go into negative equity with a car with big rebates. Yep. Great question, Joe. Glad you asked that. All right, y'all. It was a pleasure. Uh, I see you, Mr. King. Just got the book for the discounted price. Enjoy it. Use it. Please, everybody, write me with your, uh, you, you have, once you have, have my book, listen, and when you purchase the book, y'all, you get the support email for my support team. Please don't DM me for any issues when it comes to tech, because what we typically see is sometimes people look, you know, you're trying to type fast. You see the timer going down. You'll see the, uh, you'll switch one letter up by accident and then that email doesn't come. Now, if that happens, what I want you to do is take that support email and then email my support team and they'll get you the link. But anyway, we deliver lots and lots of these books. So as long as you type your email in right, check your email in a matter of minutes, dig right in and please email me your success stories. Email me your deal. I don't want y'all just writing me, showing me pictures of cars like everybody else. People will make videos saying, hey, look at the price of this car. Uh, I mean, look at this car I just got. I want y'all emailing me with numbers. Deshaun, look at how much money I just saved. Deshaun, look at the discount. Look at how much I just paid for this used car below market. That's what I want. Y'all can send me those all day. We'll post them to the show. I love, I love hearing y'all success stories. So that's the show. I'll catch y'all on the next segment. If you're available, catch us on the next segment. We will broadcast it out at 5.30 and 8.30. But if you're available to meet us live, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, we're here 12 p.m. Eastern time. We're here at 3 p.m. Eastern time. We're on every all four platforms. Tell your friends about us. Let's keep saving this money. And thank you to everybody that got the book. Thank you to everybody that shared the broadcast. We can't do this without y'all. All right. I'll see y'all in the next show.